day 26 and day 27 of building the smart wood shop. This is one operation. This is building the 20 deep drawer. So a lot of repetition here. Be doing a lot of ripping and cross cutting. I have 40 fronts and backs and 40 sides. So 80 pieces to cut. So I used up all of my fall off and I had to go to some full sheets of this uh, 12 millimeter plywood. And I decided uh, instead of using the track here, I uh, had the table saw set up and the in feed and out feed. So I just pushed uh, a full sheet through. Now I wouldn't do this if this were my final cut. If the cut were critical, I'd want to use the track. But since uh, my what I'm doing is I measured or set the fence up to cut a wide enough piece to make three strips long enough to make the side. So I'll be uh, readjusting the fence and then breaking uh, these two wider pieces into three pieces each. Um, so, you know, just using the, the best tool for the job and this uh, uh, made a lot of sense. Now, I don't like to break my machinery down or move uh, fences or, or stops. Uh, in this case, I did and I used the numbers to dial it in and then I grabbed a piece of scrap and just did a test uh, just to make sure that everything would match up. And then, of course, uh, this is the final operation here of just, you know, got it back to the the proper um, width and going to run those uh, both of those pieces, those wider pieces I cut through to get my final cut. Same thing with the cross cut, you know, having 40 pieces exactly one size and 40 pieces the other, I just set up the uh, stop on the miter fence once and uh, and made all of the cuts. Now with the, the stack, I have to take 20 of the 40 front backs. Of course, once I make these cuts, they will officially become the fronts. And I am going to uh, show you how this is the same jig I'd use for the uh, shallower boxes. And this is, you know, show you how simple it is. It's just a piece of plywood with the cutout in it um, to, to make the um, handle pole there and I just set back uh, set it back far enough that I could wedge the um, face up in against the bench and then make my cut and then you notice here I'm using uh, my small um, 700 router from uh, Festool and I'm tipping it in it's not a plunge router and I actually damaged the template tipping it in it kind of skidded over one time about halfway through so I did switch over to the proper router plunge router uh, sh should have used one from the beginning. I also could have made a little bit of an adjustment to this template where I had a, a, um, a stop and a holder on one side and I could have just slipped it in and it would have been trapped in on, uh, you know, not only back up against the bench, but on one side. And then it got, could have gotten away with using one clamp, which would have sped things up a little bit more. So if I did it again, that's probably what I would do. Here I've just I've cut it just so you can see the repetition just one after another after another to get all 20 done. The other thing this um, Makita router I did a video I was kind of shopping around for just a little handheld router and uh, you know I've got three uh, larger routers from Festo one small one and uh, one medium size and one large. And then I've got my big uh, uh, Milwaukee for my table work. And so anyway, I wanted a little battery operated one. I couldn't find one, but I got a corded one from Makita and I uh, thought it was nice. It had a little dial in depth gauge and uh, long cord. And I thought that'd be perfect for, you know, I do so much roundover work. I didn't really feel I needed a precision uh, router to do that. But I got to tell you, after getting used to the precision of Festool, using, uh, no offense to Makita, I mean, it's a $99 router, so I don't expect much. Um, but no matter what I did, I got some drift in the bit. So this little little eighth inch roundover, I kept getting the little shoulder line because the bit would drift. I took it out and tightened it down uh, three different times so it wasn't the chuck. And then I uh, took the uh, flip lever off and tightened that bolt down so much so that I could barely close it with my hand and I still got drift. So it was fine for this because, uh, you know, I was doing sanding anyway, but I definitely wouldn't use that router for any of my finish work, uh, any, anything that was critical anyway. 
So now what I'm going to do is assemble the drawer boxes. So uh, just like with the narrow ones, I will uh, staple, glue and staple uh, the sides run through. And that just gives me a little more strength when I'm pulling on the drawer, um, having the, uh, the staples be in perpendicular. And of course, the glue will do the yeoman's work as far as actually holding it once uh, everything is uh, set up. And then on the bottom of the drawer, I took advantage of the, just like with the shallow depth ones, uh, took advantage of the um, rabbits and the dados. It just made assembly so easy, just fill them up with glue and then um, put the, uh, the box or the sides in as one unit. Uh, in this case, so, you know, you can see my methods changed a little bit in the pre-assembly of the box. You know, it's, it, that's the way things go. You you get an operation going, either you try it different ways and it, it, uh, it, it may or may not be faster one way or another. But I found this to be, you know, the uh, the most efficient way to to put them together, to pre-assemble the, the box. On the big drawers, I did it the opposite. I did a pre-assembly and it slowed me down. It was hard to to fit it, so I, I went to uh, putting the pieces in separate in, but in this case, went uh, perfectly. And then uh, plenty of staples, these are a quarter crown, inch and a half long staples, and um, then I used that little block uh, to make sure that I didn't get any shiners uh, to the inside of my drawer. Still got a few and knocked them out, but uh, for the most part, uh, turned out pretty good. And then I had to repeat this operation 20 times a little monotonous but it was nice you know i'm just listening to my podcast there and and not really having to think about the work too much it's uh all the setup and everything was cut right pretty hard to put it together improperly so there you have it 20 of them assembled and now change operations and go to the sanding and the routing the detailing so I started with this uh, sanding router pad after a couple of drawers and kind of fighting the movement. I uh, started clamping them down with a long clamp on each side and that was just taking uh, too long. So what I ended up doing was taking a couple of pieces of uh, plywood that I had just some scrap and clamped them down on the bench in a manner that trapped. The box and I flipped it over did the bottoms you know did the top edges and so that that's the kind of things you learn as you're moving through well if you want to keep following along if you like these videos be sure to like subscribe most important share it with others and if you want to support the channel you can use the link to Ron's Amazon store which you'll find in the video description down below thanks for taking the time to watch have a great day